Welcome to this ExecRank Continuing Board Education Program. What to know when interviewing for a board position. This program is worth three credits. With us today we have Mr. Jeff Hodge. Jeff is a senior client partner at Morgan Samuels where he leads the board recruitment practice and is responsible for managing client relationships including assessment, placement, and development of senior leaders and their teams. Jeff has over 30 years of experience in the executive search industry and specializes in senior executive and board level searches. His executive search practice is focused on assignments to place chief executive officers, corporate directors, chief human resource officers, and professional services partners. In addition to his general management and director search work, he has conducted assignments for senior managers in charge of most functional areas. His clients have included AT&T, Bank of America, Baker & McKinsey, KPMG, McKinsey, Deloitte & Touche, Clorox, Kaiser Permanente, Pacific Gas & Electric, Genentech, Apple Computer, Delta Dental, Fireman's Fund, Vertex, Capella & Charles Schwab, among others. Thank you, Jeff, for being a part of um, our uh, exec rank board recruitment segment uh, for our continuing board education. Um, we appreciate you being on this today. Thanks for the uh, invitation, Rachel. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, today we will be discussing best practices for interviewing for a board seat. So, Jeff, based on your experience, can you give us a rundown of today's typical interview process and cycle uh, for a board that is looking to acquire a new director or directors, please? Happy to do so. I think the first thing I'd say, though, is that um, while there's certainly averages and you could boil it down, there's almost no such thing as a typical board search process or timeline right now. And there's some, some factors that contribute to that, and, and I thought maybe I'd talk a little bit about some of those factors and then, and then give them a little bit of background on why uh, they have some implications on process and, and timing. <clears throat> some of the some of the key things to uh, consider in the in, in the factor in here are um, uh, is it a public company or is it a private company and what are the implications uh, uh, of that? Uh, another element is whether it's a planned transition such as a retirement or an approaching term limit for a director. So there's. Uh, uh, a warning well in advance when there might be an opening, or is it unplanned? Has someone uh, suddenly uh, left the board and there's a uh, there's a need for a replacement? Another driver on the on the process is is whether um, there's an event that's uh, that's coming up, uh, such as uh, an IPO could be uh, could be a factor if it's a private board and it has a time frame uh, in the near future uh, to go uh, to the public market. Um, another issue to consider is is whether there's um, an activist uh, issue or involvement, uh, or whether there's a uh, potential uh, takeover uh, kind of activity um, in process right now. <clears throat> I'd add that uh, implications for process and timing also involve how experienced uh, the board is in adding new members and how experienced the person is that's, uh, that's leading the initiative uh, to add the new new member in the board. Uh, with experience, uh, there's there's typically quite a bit more uh, efficiency. And then lastly, I'd say um, the uh, the alignment of the board, are they, uh, are they consistent in what they're looking for? Do they know what they're looking for? And is there, uh, is there agreement? Um, uh, Rachel, if it makes sense, I could uh, elaborate on uh, each of those factors uh, and uh, would be happy to do so. Yes, absolutely. Please do. So with respect to the public versus private company, I find myself doing a lot more uh, for private companies these days um, as, as opposed to the past, and much of that is driven by um, private equity uh, organizations, which in the past didn't typically uh, look for outside directors uh, beyond the, the founders or the acquired entity board members that they had. So one of the differences is that the um, kind of consideration when you're thinking about um, the type of board you're going to be uh, uh, looking at an opportunity for, 
the private uh, organizations tend to move a little bit more quickly. They're a bit more process. Uh, their, their process is a bit more tuned into the specific uh, business and operating experience uh, you might bring uh, to that board, a little less concerned with governance-specific uh, uh, experience, such as audit committee experience, that sort of thing, unless there's an IPO uh, coming up. So they, they tend to move a little bit more quickly and have a fairly narrow focus, which moves uh, moves the search the search along. Um, with respect to a planned or unplanned transition, the planned um, board changes, where there's a, a term uh, expiring or there's a retirement coming up, they tend to uh, have nearly, uh, typically, a year. Uh, advance warning, and uh, they start about 12 months, 10 to 12 months before that that transition. And the search, uh, it's not a leisurely pace, but it's uh, it's focused, and it probably is an eight to nine month process. And I, I think we'll talk a little bit more about the process uh, in a few minutes. The unplanned, um, where there's a sudden change, obviously it's all hands on deck and moves along, and they can be completed within 30 to 60 days with uh, with a lot of uh, focus and attention. Um, if there's an event coming up, uh, one might be an IPO, another might be uh, typical could be a company I'm working with now that is, uh, has to remain confidential, but they're splitting into two public uh, entities, and they have a time frame for that. They need a, uh, new board members uh, for each of the upcoming entities, and they have uh, have dates that they're driving for, so it's a it's a, um, uh, a very focused, uh, once a week kind of all hands on deck meeting uh, process, and that's moving moving along very quickly. Um, maybe let me just skip down to the the, the experience board leadership uh, makes a huge difference. I'm doing one right now for a public entity that has a, an extremely experienced nomination governance head um, who is. Uh, Adept and moving it along. Uh, she's uh, on several boards um, uh, already. Uh, the calls are brisk and to the point. Um, it'll still probably take all in six months for the process, but uh, there's no uh, there's no confusion on the phone call. Um, finally, when there's uh, when there's alignment, I certainly notice the difference. Uh, we go off into the market looking for a specific uh, type of board member, and uh, that's what the focus is, and that's ultimately where the appointment is. If there's if there's difference of opinion, it may take longer because they're not quite sure what they want, or they're they'd like to to look at a range of of candidates that can cause the process to be a bit bit longer. So as you're talking to uh, getting to know a little bit about the board where you're considering an opportunity and they're considering a you, you might get a sense for uh, both alignment and what kind of experience they have in uh, adding directors. Rachel, why don't I stop there for a second in terms of process, and if you'd like me to elaborate a little bit more, I'd be happy to. Okay. Um, well, I know a little bit later we'll, we probably will talk, speak a, a little bit about process, um, unless there's something that you know we aren't going to be covering. You're you're welcome to to go ahead and fill us in on anything else you feel would be relevant in this area. Okay, happy to do so. You know, how long does the process take? Um, let me let me talk about that a little bit. Um, the, the uh, as I think most everyone knows, the, the board role has changed dramatically uh, post some of the uh, the activities uh, at the turn of the century here with Enron, Wilcom, and others, and the various government pronouncements. Um, so there's um, I, there's, a, there's a sense that this is both a real job and it's got a real responsibility to it. So both the boards and the candidates are taking it very seriously. The um, Decision to go to um, the market to add a board member is usually a, a meeting followed by another meeting. Uh, this is at the board level where there's a discussion on uh, the kind of director that they uh, would be seeking. So now we're two months in, and at that point there's a decision made on the process. Will, will we do it ourselves, uh, the board would consider, or would we go through a search firm uh, and utilize uh, other outside sources? So now we're two months, two to three months. At that point, 
um, it becomes, in effect, a, a, a real search with a, a specification in, in virtually every case now where I'm doing a board assignment. There's a, a specific skill set that's being sought. There's a specific contribution that the board is looking for, be it uh, perhaps a, a, a geographic uh, 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 expertise that the board and the company is a little light on. Say you've got one now where uh, experience in China would make some sense. I have another in process where Eastern Europe, specifically uh, Russia, could make some sense. Um, is it um, a situation where we need someone who's perhaps up a marketing strategic route to have one of those uh, going now where someone who is, uh, say, growth-oriented uh, makes sense. Another one that I'll be launching in about four to five months will be looking at uh, someone who's got very strong credentials in manufacturing. What, what's changing in the manufacturing world? So every every assignment now has has pretty in depth discussion with the nominations and governments uh, committee of the board or the directors that are driving the the board search process to really um, convey to the search firm you know what it is they're they're looking for and you know what the route up might be what the industry sectors might be that could make some sense and it's also um, a situation where you need alignment in the potential universe of candidates so that you get uh, you know, typically close to the mark in terms of the industry sector uh, in the environment, but don't cross it in terms of uh, potential conflict, which is uh, something that would would um, keep a, a potential director from assuming a, a director role in a company. So, with the with the specification um, in alignment, there we're probably sixty to ninety days in, at which time the search search firm is is going to market. Um, the, you know, I've been doing this 25, 30 years, doing board recruitment since the mid-'80s, and, and back in those uh, early early days, it was fairly straightforward. It was going to be a, a CEO. Uh, it wasn't, there wasn't going to be much diversity. You know, it was going to be a relatively simple process. Um, with the evolution of the process and the, the fact that it has become a real job, um, it, the, it's, it's much more akin to a, a C-suite search at a very senior level. And those are, most of you are familiar with that. It's, it does involve a specification. It involves um, uh, the search firm conducting a great deal of research where the potential candidates might be. It involves a great deal of uh, sourcing, talking to people that uh, we trust and in turn uh, trust us uh, to deliver great ideas when we when we talk to them. It's predicated on talking to past board members that we've worked with, asking them who the who the best candidates for this type of role might be. So it's it's a very uh, it's a very rigorous uh, focused process. It's uh, much more than a simple phone call. Uh, most of my assignments, 90% plus, will involve an in-person interview, which, which adds to the to the time in 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 the process, and uh, obviously shows how important it, uh, it how important it is. And um, there's ultimately typically three to six potential candidates for a board search at this point. And again, that's quite a bit different uh, than the past when uh, there might be three, three or four potential candidates, but they were taken and discussed sequentially and offered the role sequentially as well. That's not the case now. So in almost every opportunity that you're taking a look at, you must, uh, you have to, you have to presume that there are other people they're talking to. And, and I counsel my clients as well that uh, all of the strong candidates that you're talking to, if they've determined that the time is right for them to consider uh, a board, it's highly likely that they're talking to a variety of uh, companies and organizations about opportunities as well. So with uh, with the search process, uh, the 60 to 90 day um, uh, time frame, now we've got uh, a valid list of candidates 
And and then we have the factor that is probably the, the most unique to the board search process that causes them to take a while, and that's the calendar. And we're talking about uh, one case now where I've I've got a California-based company with board members in uh, Chicago, Texas, North Carolina, and candidates in in Wisconsin and Houston and and all over. And getting uh, schedules to match up uh, is is uh, is quite a challenge. Um, most board assignments um, are still uh, face-to-face meetings at the director and candidate level. And so moving that along is, uh, is the, you have to have a great uh, administrative assistant, both in my end and both in, in, in the client end, and fortunately I do. And <clears throat> moving people through that process uh, often involves weekends. Many of the interviews are flying people here and there. A weekend typically the first uh, round would be a, a session with uh, two directors, uh, followed by uh, a meeting with uh, with uh, probably the chief executive officer would be ideal, who's also on the board, but is probably not not anymore the lead in terms of looking for the new director. They used to be. They're not anymore. And so now you've got two meetings with the challenges and calendars there, and there's almost always a third and many times a fourth meeting. So that's that's typically two to three months right there of process. So now we've got... We've got five to seven months, if I do my math here, probably close to six months on average for the for the typical search. And um, you know, that, that that is that's a key factor. And often during that time frame people's uh situations change. they uh I talked to an individual this morning who is a very strong candidate in the board search. Uh he is um, leading a two billion dollar division for a major major company, and uh, his job has just just got more complex. So, um, at, at the last minute, he was scheduled to go meet with my board client next week. Um, his CEO has indicated to him that he would prefer that he not uh, take a board assignment at this point. Uh, he's just going to be too busy on the home front. So things. Things change, and uh, uh, both client, candidate, we all have to be ready for those sorts of things. Uh, the process uh, finishes with uh, final interview. Uh, the, the board compensation is pretty straight, straightforward for a public company. It's typically in the proxy, no surprises. The private companies tend to uh, be a bit more flexible, uh, even within one private equity firm, you might have multiple uh, compensation programs. Uh, you might have a different uh, program for one portfolio uh, company versus versus another. So it's hard to predict. You know, on average, um, a portfolio company board seat of a medium sized portfolio company is going to have a cash element of thirty to fifty grand. As a retainer, uh, maybe some extra compensation for special projects, and then a, uh, a 10x target on that in three to five years on an equity opportunity, with a range of say five to 15x. Earlier stage companies could have a substantially more um, more heavily uh, weighted equity uh, opportunity. So there's there's often a bit of an extra delay as there's a compensation discussion um, that happens at that point. Another element on the board searches that is, has driven them to look more like C-suite executive searches is uh, is referencing, and um, that's a, that's a key part of my process. Um, I tend to do at a board level four to six key references. These would be with people who would have a view of you as a director or a potential director. Um, in fact, I should sidebar mention that probably 50 to 60 percent of my placements now are people who are looking at their first uh, compensated board. So they're 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 new to this process and they'd be their first role. So it would be your past CEO, people that have seen you from a board standpoint where you've presented to the board. Um, they'd be people who perhaps if you've got a, a nonprofit board of substance, uh, someone from that uh, from that board. But that's something to consider and have a, a aligned in advance, um, even advance of getting the call. 
uh, asking people to be uh, to be a reference uh, uh, for you. Um, so it's a it's a very rigorous process, and um, there there are a lot of people, of course, that would like to get on boards. If you get into that three to five uh, range and you're in the finals, that's a that's a great compliment, and, and often it, it's a coin flip at the end. Um, most of the board specs have got three to four. I wouldn't call them absolutes, but key elements, and another three to five that are uh, uh, would be pluses in background. So no one, no one's background's quite on target ever. It's always a mix and match, and and that comes down to a variety of opinions around the boardroom. So when it gets down to the end, it's a little tar- you know, hard sometimes to tell who's going to get the offer. Uh, but if you're if you're in the interview process, that's that's a real compliment and and a, and a plus. Um, Rachel, anything in, in terms of what I just commented on that you'd like me to elaborate on or we could move on? Uh, well, all of that, it's so interesting how long the process takes and how, yeah, just how rigorous it is to, to pick the right person uh, for a specific board. And actually, just at the very beginning, you talked a little bit about, you know, public versus private companies um, yep. when they're looking to, to place someone on a board. And so regarding that, um, are there any important distinctions for a candidate to consider if the company is public or private in terms of their approach in the interview process and also their preparation? <laughs> yeah, there probably are. Let me let me reflect. So uh, let's take the private one first. One of the one of the key differences is that um, un- unlike a public board, where around the boardroom you've got uh, independent directors and executives or executives on occasion. Uh, so you've got two constituencies constituencies at the table representing uh, all of the stakeholders for the company. In a in a private, uh, particularly a private equity environment, you typically you've got three constituencies. You've got you've got the executive group, um, sometimes a founder. You've got uh, the independent director, which presumably you would uh, be one of coming in, and then you have the private equity uh, director who uh, has a different. Uh, um, uh, game plan, if you will. It, it's not necessarily conflicting with anybody else's, but it's it, it's a factor. So, to the extent in that environment, uh, you take an extra step uh, beyond understanding the company and the opportunity there that you get a sense for the private equity firm. What's their what's their track record? What's their game plan? Uh, give you a sense for their commitment to to the company. Ask ask them if there are some things that. Um, are not in the spec. Uh, the spec is the public document uh, that uh, the executives within the company, at least the, the CEO, has signed off on. Sometimes the private equity folks will give me signals beyond that in terms of, and it's not necessarily negative, they may want someone who's very senior uh, in experience who could provide some mentoring to the CEO, who could provide some mentoring to the CFO or other other executives, or there'd be some other element uh, within the within the context of the discussion, the, the, the extreme cases where, uh, and you can pick this up uh, perhaps in some nuances as you're talking to an extreme case would be where they're not so sure about the CEO. And one of the considerations in considering you as a director is uh, they, they may they may want you to either step in and be the CEO or or provide counsel on how to find someone who can be more effective. Uh, those discussions are rare, but in fact, I had one of those this morning. So they do uh, they do happen. The the public uh, the public company it's it's asking um, asking questions on on things that um, you may have to sign an NDA or if it's a IPO environment uh, soon to be IPO environment and an NDA as well. But there could be things that have not come to market yet. Uh, there could be. Um, there could be potential surprises. Uh, uh, talking to uh, the CEO, a very sophisticated CEO, multi-billion-dollar company, public company, went on a board, went on the audit committee, and didn't think to ask the question. Uh, you wouldn't necessarily think about it, but the taxes—they hadn't—they uh, hadn't filed. They were way behind with the IRS and the negotiations, and it was—it was, it was going to get a little messy. And by going on that board and and being on the audit committee, all of a sudden he's part of that process. There are other other sorts of things to to consider. I've got another board that 
um, the, the company has a potential uh, delisting uh, situation. Those are solvable um, because of the uh, nearly 12 months you have to solve them, or you can uh, reverse split the stock and do it that way. But that, that's a that's a challenge. So you want to you want to stay tuned, uh, stay very current in terms of anything that uh, comes out about the company, and don't hesitate to to ask because uh, you know the fact that the board specification says there are six meetings. Um, if, if you're in the, the middle of an activist issue or takeover or bid for the company, or there's something out there, it can be uh, multiples of that in terms of, of time commitment, which, which may not scare you away, but something you, you, need, to, uh, you need to factor in. So those, those would be just a couple of things, Rachel, that uh, come to mind in terms of uh, the differences. I, I'd say maybe, and I touched on this a little bit, the, the private equity environments and some of the public smaller companies that I work with, they're much more tuned in to the specific operating experience that you bring, a recent uh, uh, biotech environment with a product ready for market. Uh, they, they were limited in terms of their commercialization experience on the board, so they wanted uh, general managers who had successfully taken a product to market from a very early early stage, and that was that was really the gist of the conversation. It wasn't about governance experience or or committee contribution or that sort of thing. It was it was very much about uh, you know the business uh, tuning that uh, uh, this particular uh, director, and they ended up uh, bringing in two directors actually uh, would would bring to this uh, this kind of role. Um, so that's uh, there's a couple of the differences, Rachel. All right, perfect. Thank you. Um, and I know we talked about the whole the whole timeline, really, and um, you gave us a really great rundown of kind of the step by step. And so, um, and you spoke about that timeline specifically. But so, how long does it typically the nomination process take uh, from decision to add a new director to the right candidate being added to the board? And you kind of talked about this. If there's anything else, I know that was one of our questions. If there's anything else you wanted to add to anything more specific to that? You know, go ahead with. No, I don't think, you know, I think as you get into the process, you, you, you get a sense for it, and, and it can be anywhere from a, from a month to a year. Uh, okay. The average, you know, if there was an average, it's probably six, six plus months yeah. from, from start to finish. And again, it's a, it's a, it's a pretty rigorous process. So I wouldn't, um, you know, if it doesn't move along as quickly as you might uh, like, it's, it's, it's probably not about you. Again, first and foremost, it's probably about calendars. Yeah, absolutely. All right, thank you. I hate to ask you to repeat yourself. I just wanted to make sure we, we hadn't missed anything okay. in that timeline. Um, mm -hmm. And then you also talked about the similarities of, you know, C-suite role and these director roles. Um, but how is the interview and recruitment process different than the process when hiring for a C-suite role? Yeah, I guess, I guess what, uh, what I'm seeing is it's, it's, it's so similar uh, that uh, – uh, the, the differences, um, you know, aren't aren't that clear. I guess one of the one of the keys is is just that the level of sophistication you're dealing with at at this uh, at this level. Uh, typically, the board members you're talking to have been chief executives or C-suite uh, executives, and uh, the candidates are as well. Um, you can get right right into the into the, the the gist of it when you're when you're having a having a meeting obviously there's a bit of a chemistry check and a cultural fit uh, sort of uh, sort of discussion uh, but there's an expectation that these discussions they, they tend to go an hour to two hours get pretty serious and pretty detailed uh, uh, pretty quickly you know, want to want to do as much listening uh, as, as possible in terms of what they want to share with you, and again, it'll probably be more than is in the spec. Uh, and then, and then uh, they'll they'll be asking you about your uh, to elaborate on some of your uh, your credentials. Um, so that you know, it's, it's kind of the, the senior. You can you can expect a, a pretty senior group with with uh, with good questions uh, right from the get go. Perfect. All right, um, and then. In talking about this whole process, what are some of the common mistakes that executives make during this this whole process from start to finish? 
Yeah, again, this is a pretty sophisticated group by and large, and, and um, you know, seasoned um, uh, uh, folks. So, I, you know, it's interesting. I don't see a lot of mistakes. Uh, but let me, and it may be miscategorizing these, but I think I alluded to one, and, and uh, this particular individual certainly had no heads up. But, you know, make sure that if you're on active duty with a company, uh, that your company approves of you taking the role. Um, another corollary to that would be to make sure if you're on other boards or have other affiliations, there's no conflict um, it, 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 to, to go into a process and then have to pull out because there's either a conflict or you can't get approval. That that doesn't uh, do anybody any good. So that make sure there's uh, you've got a clear path to accepting. Um, somewhat related to that, and you should ask you should ask for clarity on what the meeting dates are over the next two years. Can you make the meetings? Uh, it used to be that the attendance wasn't taken all that closely, but now it gets measured by uh, rating agencies and others, and you you have to be at 75% or more of the meetings, ideally all of them, and can you make the, the strategic meetings that, that may be um, extra uh, from time to time. Uh, so I would, early in the process, ask for the meeting dates, double-check, make sure you can make sure that... Um, uh, you can be there, uh, and again, you know, make sure there's no uh, nothing conflicting. Do you have something upcoming? Are you looking at another board that uh, could uh, provide a conflict? Is there is there anything in your current consulting? If you're consulting, that that uh, that could be uh, could be a problem. Um, you know, I've touched on this as well. It's not necessarily a mistake, but. Uh, you know, everybody's got a balanced, healthy ego at this level. So, and remember, it's not uh, not uncommon for both to take a while and for you to be one of a couple of a uh, couple of candidates. Um, you know, maybe the the most important thing to consider, and this has various uh, manifestations, but is is when you go into this discussion. I think most fundamentally, no matter <clears throat> what your what your functional experience has been, have you been a CFO or a CIO or a CHRO, or what your industry experience uh, has been, what your level, um, the, the winning candidates, even if they've never been CEOs, they tend to come across as having a CEO perspective. They tend to be people that that will reference as having enterprise-wide um, in, um, interests and, and understanding. So I think if you've, if you've been up a functional route or you uh, coming in from a very different kind of role, within, within a short period of time, you want to be perceived as a strong uh, business person with great judgment and not necessarily perceived that uh, you know he's a he or she is a CIO or a CHRO or you know they're not interested in this or that aspect of what's going on in the company and and you know what is it what is it that the CEO has on his or her plate that's challenging and you know how can you um, help uh, both the CEO and the company through those challenges so that that'd be kind of the uh, you know the, the the most fundamental thing. You know, obviously, the, when the boards are adding, they're looking for specific uh, sets of skills to to add to the company. But they're also looking for people who will you know, think about the overall uh, the business. And you, you really, at the end of the day, you you have to understand how the company makes money, and you know where what all of the factors are. So that 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 would be probably the most fundamental, not necessarily a mistake, but go into it with that kind of attitude. Okay, absolutely. Um, and so kind of my next question is, what role does the chairman commonly take in regards to the interview and nomination process? Um, the, the chair, um, things have evolved. So the chair is, is actually often not involved all that much other than to have provided uh, the, the agenda and leadership to move the company toward uh, um, the um, recruitment of a new director. So what I typically deal with now is a subset of the board 
typically chaired by the uh, the head of the uh, nomination and, and governance committee of the board, and that person is typically not the chair of the board. Um, uh, it could be a lead director, but um, the, the the guidance on, on the search process is is driven by that person in a, in a public environment, um, and in a in a private company. It's it, it, there may be more more guidance for the the chair CEO if it's a if it's a private company, say a closely held or family company. We haven't really touched on that, but if it's if it's that kind of environment, the chair, often the CEO, same person uh, may be more active in driving the process. The PE firms is typically the the lead managing director on on that particular board that drives it. So the the, the chair is. Uh, is is uh, always involved in 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 some respect, but there's a, there's a continuing from you know fairly close to zero until it gets time to vote to um, the very active in a, in a closely held uh, company. Excellent, that's so interesting. Um, and I do. I actually are the next thing I was kind of curious about is in our experience here at Exec Rank, advisory boards are being adopted um, quite often these days for smaller companies. And uh, do you see any difference in formality in that interview process and hiring process for advisory boards with those small companies? Yeah, I do. Um, you know, I, I would second that, and it's. Um, I've done a lot of that. I just um, completed um, six advisory board. Uh, uh, placements with an organization um, and, and multiple organizations this year. So he's it, it, fairly active, and it's a great uh, uh, resume builder, credential builder for uh, future board opportunities and networking. The process is it's um, it, it is less formal. Um, there's somewhat less uh, rigor in the process. It, the process it probably moves along more quickly. Maybe one of the chief differences is that. There's often a, a, a committee of the, of the board that is a, a seeking particular advice, or there's some specific kind of advisory role that's, that's being sought. And so the, the overall board uh, may delegate more of the process to the people who are driving that uh, to fulfill that particular need. And so um, one of the things I notice is that they move along more quickly because the candidates don't have to um, see all the board members, so you, you have much less calendar complexity. And, and, and frankly, the, the, the fact that it's a non-fiduciary board role makes it a little less risky for the organizations to move it along more, uh, more quickly as well. So um, it, uh, you know, again, I think it's a trend. I think we'll see more and more of those. I've seen some organizations where they've, in effect, uh, appointed advisors to committees. Uh, it could be a comp committee, it could be finance, whatever, and uh, that that's another uh, kind of resume builder. But these. Uh, these, these are pretty efficient uh, um, assignments when I'm doing them, uh, not because it's me, but that they're, they're, that they're focused. And um, they also, the, the parallel is they, they almost always have a, have a position specification as well. It's somewhat narrower typically. It's got to be a particular background that would bring compensation committee experience or, or, or compensation skills or, or something very specific. So that would be a key difference. Okay. Yeah, it sounds like it's it's kind of changing over time, as most things do, but um, that evolution is, is really interesting. So what are your thoughts on how the interview and nomination process will continue to evolve in the future? It's a great question. Um, I'm looking forward to it, uh, to see what that would look like. I think, uh, I think that the nominations committee – Heads, we just touched on that a minute ago. I think they're getting better at uh, better and better with experience now uh, at directing the new director acquisition process. And I think this will continue. I've seen some some real improvement in in efficiency, communication, uh, guidance to to the search firm, and uh, you know, I expect that uh, except expect that to get uh, better. Um, 
I, you know, that said, I think the the process is going to at this level will will very much remain tailored to the specific organizational need, size, structure, and it's it, it's it's not going to be something uh, unlike kind of the lower level search work. Uh, that has moved more to LinkedIn. I don't see that happening. I think this is uh, at this level so significant, so impactful that that it's going to continue to be uh, an in-person interaction for the most part. Um, So it'll 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 still have uh, time constraints and process constraints to it. Um, That said, I think that you know, we'll, we'll always be looking for technology solutions that allow for better and better use of video and preliminary interviews, perhaps, in, in other emerging technologies that, that uh, I'm not smart enough to know about um, that, that will come our way. So, you know, if we can find some ways to to narrow that process, um, and you want one of the one of the key challenges in the in the board recruitment area. And there's no real solution um, in sight, except maybe through organizations like yours. Is that uh, it's a very inefficient market. So there's there's a set of great directors and potential directors on one side, and there are board needs and opportunities on the other. And there's no real good highway in between. There's no there's no um, efficient market. So to the extent that that somehow uh, might evolve over time, um, I think that could have a could have a terrific uh, impact. Um, I, one of the one of the drivers and one of the things that we're going to see that's really uh, important. That's certainly one of one of my drivers and ours as a as a firm is is that there'll be increased um, emphasis on making sure that uh, boards have diverse slates of great candidates. And um, you know I. I think any, any, any clients out there that are looking should probably send their search firms back into the market if they don't have diverse candidates on their on their on their slates. And I think that's that's something that uh, you know needs needs to continue, needs to improve. I've seen some improvement, but it's been pretty pretty minor. Um, I think that's that's probably it. I I, I had a um, Good guidance from uh, I did work for Bank of America years ago, and and uh, the then uh, then CEO we kind of boiled it down um, to two things when he was looking at uh, considering a board role, and if you kind of use this as a as a guidepost, it, I think it's helpful, and and that is uh, and on one side of the coin is what is the what is the contribution that I can make to this particular company. That would be helpful uh, to them. What is, in my experience, what have I learned? What what can I do to make it more effective, keep it out of trouble, etc. And the other side of the coin is, what can I learn from it? What what experiences will I get, both in terms of learning a new market, learning from fellow directors around the board, that will be helpful to me either in my career or as a person or growth or whatever. So, what is my contribution? And what can I learn? If you factor all of, if you factor those two things as you're looking at a board, I think you can make the right decision in terms of whether this is one you want to pursue, and um, and, and take a hard look at. Thank you for joining us for this Exec Rank Continuing Board Education Program.